Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I'm so happy that you're here to join me today. I think I've got some fun inspiration for you. So what are we waiting for? Let's get crafting. Today we'll be working on spring and Easter DIYs using mostly Dollar Tree supplies. So let's get started. For this project, we're gonna use these eggs and either a bunny or a heart. At this point, I wasn't sure. Some of these flowers from Dollar Tree cone flowers. I think they're winter flowers, but I thought they were kind of cool, so we're gonna use them. And then I've got some of this greenery from Walmart, this boxwood pick, and then you're gonna need some foam, of course. And then I've got this black and white checked ribbon from Dollar Tree as well, and then a jar. So the first thing I'm gonna do is spray this jar with this Kills chalk paint. It says it's white, but it kind of comes out an off-white, which I really like. So, and then I'm gonna paint some other pieces with Dixie Bell chalk paint. I'm gonna work on some eggs here. You're gonna need, and actually, you know, the eggs I showed you were plastic eggs, and then I decided to switch to these foam eggs on a pick, and you're gonna need seven of them. Um, and I'm just taking my pouncy brush and I'm pouncing it on these eggs. And I chose these eggs because of the glitter and stuff on them. Once you kind of pounce the paint on, it adds even more texture over the glitter. And then I'm doing the same process on the bunny, which is what I decided to use. So front and back on the bunny. And then when I heat set it, it will keep that texture by pouncing it on. Using this chalkboard paint, mix it with a little bit of water, not too soupy, just a little bit and a fan brush. I'm gonna add some splatters, and what I do is dip the fan brush in the paint as you saw me do, and kind of wipe the excess off onto the paper, and then I just hit the fan brush with my finger, and it just adds these nice little splatters. Perfect. And of course, I will do that on all the rest of these off camera. So I've got my jar all painted. And I'm just taking like 120 grit sandpaper, just really lightly. And I'm just going over the raised areas just to give a nice light uh, rustic kind of look. Just a nice little bit of sanding here. And then cut some foam up. I'm going to fill the whole jar with some foam decided to lose, lose, use some lamb's ear from Walmart. They come two to a thingy for $2, and I'm just gonna use two, one on each side. I'm gonna start tucking in some other greenery around in here. Gonna make a little egg bouquet. I think it turned out super, super adorable. Nice and farmhouse looking. Gonna toss in the eggs here. I'm not gonna really toss them in. We're gonna poke them in, poke them into the styrofoam whatever pattern you like. Yeah, I just love the colors of this. I love the neutral tones of it. This is what it's starting to look like. And then we're gonna toss in these flowers. I'm wanting to say toss in for some reason. We're gonna poke in these corn, cone flowers. I can really talk today. Poke in these cone flowers. Like I said, I think they're wintry, but they get hidden enough once I add in some of these roses also from Dollar Tree. And these are the smaller roses that kind of have a little bit of green in the center of them as you can see here but I just love the texture of those one other cone flowers so I'm leaving them in winter or not this is what it looks like here I think I add in a couple more of the roses of course as you're seeing me do and then I'm gonna add a little uh, quote onto the bunny use my Cricut design space spring is in the air and I use the uh, fonts Quindella, Adinda, and Cochin. Boy, I can really say these words. Um, spring and air are a combination of the two fonts, Quindella and Adinda, and then the regular print font, it's Cochin. And I will list these, of course, all in the description box. So this bunny that I picked up, um, it was from a previous project and um, it didn't have a hole in it. So I'm gonna have to put a hole in it here in just a little bit. But in the meantime, I'm gonna just add some moss here. And I got my moss from Joann's, but you know, moss from Dollar Tree is fine. Just kind of tucking it in around the edges to cover up that foam and stuff, make everything look real finished off. And then I'm gonna use this wider um, ribbon from Dollar Tree. Of course, now they have the smaller one out. This came out at fall, this wider ribbon. And I'm just gonna tie it into a simple bow. But if you don't have this, like I said, they have that thinner one out right now and it would look just as cute. So just tying this into a bow, like I said, nice and easy. Cut my ribbon off to the length I want it and then just make my loops all nice and fluffy and pretty. 
and then I'm going to use these bulb pins. You can get them in a pack at Walmart in the sewing section. And then, of course, as I said earlier, didn't have a hole, so I have to actually punch a hole back in my bunny. I had filled it for another project with wood filler. Anyway, I'm going to take this bulb pin, the bunny through the loop, and once that's in, this project is complete. Before we move on to project number two, let me take a moment to introduce myself. Welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've been a crafter for years and I do all sorts of DIY home decor crafts from Dollar Tree crafts to rustic to farmhouse to primitive and even a little bit of paper crafting. I post videos once a week so go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me. If you're on Instagram, pop on over and say hi. I'd love to have you join me there for a little more inspiration and even yet more inspiration from myself and other crafters. I do have a new Facebook group. I will have the link to Instagram and Facebook group in the description box. For now, let's move on to project number two. So for this project, I'm starting with this bunny pattern. Now, I just went to Pinterest and I typed in free bunny template and I found the pattern that I like and I didn't even download it. I just looked at it and kind of free handed it onto some brown craft paper. But there are ones, of course, you can download. And now I've got some felt here and I'm just folding it back and forth for three layers. But in the end, I only use two layers of it. We're going to take that pattern and lay it right on top. We're going to pin it to that felt, of course, and then we're going to cut the entire thing out. Of course, as you can see, I did most of that off camera so as not to bore you. So we're just going to go through this a little bit so that you can see I really did this. <laughs> All right, now I've got this fabric placemat from Dollar Tree. One of them, I end up with three. This is my first one. I'm gonna take that bunny, pin it to the placemat, and I'm going to cut it out. And I do most of that off camera again as well. And then we'll set that aside for a moment. Be using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue today. Now I'm back with the felt using two of the felt pieces. You could use three, but in the end I went with two. I'm gonna glue the two felt pieces together so that they just, you know, stay together, of course, and they don't, you know, unravel as we go to do our project and stuff. Show you a little bit here. Gluing it nice and together. I cut a lot of it out because my head was in the way for most of it, <laughs> but I think I got a bit for you. And then we're going to move on to the placemat we cut out. It's got a little liner on it, but I'm going to just leave that on and I'm going to go ahead and glue it together as well. Again, my head was in the way, so you're just getting a little bit of it. Now I'm taking this placemat and I'm gluing it to the felt pieces that we just glued together. Again, part of it because you guessed it, my head was in the way. So here are two more placemats that I got from Dollar Tree. I was really looking for something different. There just wasn't a whole lot, but we're gonna make this work. And we're gonna take our bunny and eventually it's gonna end up on the front of that placemat. But for now, we're gonna work on some pieces for our bunny, two eyes. I took two buttons, filled it with wood filler, and I painted it with Dixie Belle caviar paint is the color, which is just black. I've got these little heart pieces I'm also going to paint in black. I'll have a link down below for you where I got these cute little country hearts. And then one bigger heart in the back. Um, I got that from Joann's. They're like 49 cents or something like that um, in their open stock wood section. But of course you can use Dollar Tree hearts. And I have two pieces of scrapbook paper here that match the uh, placemats we'll be using. I'm going to trace my heart onto it front and back. For the back side, here's the other heart you could use from Dollar Tree. For the back side, I'm going to cover it completely, but for the front side, 
the very first heart that I trace, I'm going to go in about an eighth of an inch and I'm going to redraw a new pattern line and I'm going to cut that out. And then once I cut that out, I'm going to take that pattern onto that other aqua colored cardstock, trace it, and then again redraw a new pattern line and cut that out. This allows us to see the layers of our wood and our papers. So I have already off camera sanded all my wood pieces, just a little bit of light distressing. Here are my hearts all sewn off camera with my sewing machine. I'm just taking the open end of my scissor blades, running them along the edges of my paper to kind of distress it, give a little bit of a rustic look. Go just like that and then we'll start gluing it to our heart, our larger heart. And you can see I just kind of painted around the perimeter of that as well. So like this first paper on the front, you'll see a little bit of that black showing of the wood. And then since I cut the blue heart, aqua heart smaller, you'll see a little bit of the white cardstock. Punching a hole with my We Are Memory Keepers crop dial. I'll have a link in the description box for you. And then here is another vinyl quote I cut off the Cricut. Um, and this one I used Better Memories and Charter. And I noticed when I uh, printed this out that it doesn't fit on my heart. So I'm kind of rearranging it and cutting it apart because I didn't want to go in and waste more vinyl um, to make it fit. So I'm just looking to see how I can make it fit on this heart. And actually I kind of like the way I did this instead of just directly in the center. So it was a nice happy accident. So I'm kind of fiddling with the O oh suite and I end up putting it over in the right part of the heart. There we go. That fits just a little bit better. And again, I will have the fonts listed for this in the description box as well. The cursive print is the better memories and then the just regular print font is the charter. All right, so we're going to get our bunny onto our pillow. Right now, I am just tacking it down with the Fabri-Tac. I was originally going to do this on the plain fabric, which is just the plain green, but it just wasn't looking right to me. So I'm putting it on the pattern side. I don't know if I still really like it. It's cute, but then sometimes I walk by and it's not so cute. So anyway, I'm using crochet thread here and a larger needle. And we're going to, we've tacked the bunny down with some glue. We're going to go ahead and I do most of this off camera. I'm just coming from from the back side of that placemat through the front of the bunny and then on the edge of the bunny going back to the back side of the placemat we're going to add some little stitches here so I go through the back of the placemat on the bunny pull it all the way through to the front and then right at the edge of that bunny I'm going to poke my needle back to the back side of that placemat and pull it all the way through so we'll do it again bring the needle through the front of the bunny and at the edge, put the needle back through and pull it all the way through. Just another stitch or two, and then I'll do the rest off camera. You'll continue this all the way around. And you can skip this step if you don't want to do it at all. Because of the thickness we added with the felt, the bunny is nice um, and lifted up off of the placemat, so it looks okay. But here's what it looks like with all the stitches. Here's the back of our uh, placemat, what I'm doing is putting right sides together, so the printed sides together, and we're going to put this pillow, so to speak, together, leaving about a four or five inch opening. I've pinned it. If you're a hot gluer, you can go ahead and glue all the way around all of those three and a half edges, leaving about that five inch opening. If you're a sewer like I am, you're going to take it to the sewing machine, and again, leaving about a little five inch opening so that we can stuff our little pillow. And then you're going to turn it inside out, just like I'm doing here. Just show you a little bit. Does take some time. Going to add a little bit of stuffing here. Here's what I'm going to just show you a little bit of and I'll do the rest off camera. Once everything is stuffed, you can hot glue your opening closed if you're a hot gluer or if you're a sewer, you're going to come in with your uh, you know, needle and thread and kind of turn your edges in so that it's nice and neat and sew your opening closed. Again, I'll just show you a little bit. And 
finish off our little pillow. Again, I like this, but I really wanted that bunny on the green side, but for some reason it just didn't look right. So we're going to, uh, you know, embellish our bunny. I'm using the big heart as a button, and I've got this wire covered thread. I get it at Walmart or Joann's. I can't remember which, but I think it's Walmart. And I'm just making some little whiskers, just like that. I cut about, oh, a seven or eight inch piece, curl one end, then the other end, and then I've hooked all three together with another piece of that little fabric covered wire. And then I've got some pink burlap trim. That burlap trim you can get from Dollar Tree. I cut it into a little circle. And I'm gonna use our little button eyes here, and we're gonna put those on. So I wanted some cute little pink cheeks to go with our cute little button eyes. And yes, I glued my eyes a little bit crooked. We're going to go ahead and glue down our little cheeks. Super, super cute. Then we're going to glue on our little whiskers right between the cheeks. And we're going to use the tiniest of the little hearts here to make our nose. And then I've got some sisal here. I'm going to add this right about the neck area just to add in a little more texture to kind of go in with the texture of the whiskers and some ribbon here. I've got this ribbon is a little bit sparkly, but you could use that Dollar Tree ribbon I just showed you from Dollar Tree, of course. And then again, gluing that on at the neck, again, adding a bulb pin in this heart. And I'm just going to pin it right around somewhere at the top of the ear. And once I do that, this project is complete. So let's move on to our last project, number three. Now this is a thrift to treasure project. I'm starting out with this frame that was given to me. I love the crackle of this frame, but I do not like the color. Off camera, it's really yellow tinted. So I'm using Debbie's Design Diary DIY chalk paint in the color White Swan. I'll do two coats. It pained me to cover the crackle because I love that texture, but um, I rather have it a little bit smoother than the color that it was and I'm just taking some hundred grit sandpaper and I'm just Distressing very lightly across the sharp edges. I tried to do more distressing, but then that Horrible yellow color would show through it was not a pretty yellow and so then I had to go back and repaint it again So very light distressing so for this project I'm going to be using this garland from Dollar Tree using some of these white lilies and then some of these kind of aqua colored lilies, some of this baby's breath from Walmart, it's like $2 for the bundle, some of these hydrangeas from Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna be using this cross from Walmart, it's double sided, it was like 98 cents, so I'm gonna use the hope side. And then I've got some of this beautiful uh, burlap trim from Dollar Tree as well. So I'm gonna first take off this garland off of this big wired piece, heavy duty wire piece, but I'm gonna keep that. I'll find some kind of use for it. And I've already glued down some of the greenery and so I'm coming in at the bottom and gluing down some of the hydrangeas. I do apologize when we get to the top. I don't know how I had the angle of my camera or something, but my head was like in the way for most of it. So it gets a little bit choppy. I had to cut quite a bit out because you couldn't see anything but my head. So anyway, gluing in the beautiful, uh, aqua hydrangeas or not hydrangeas lilies and now coming in with the white lilies this project matches a lot of the other uh, Easter projects I've been doing in this last videos for spring and Easter I'll make sure I include that playlist in the description box in case you missed it now I'm coming back in here with some of the baby's breath just little pieces tucking it in and around down here and I'll kind of do the same on the top just a little bit different placement for the lilies and stuff so I'll glue the greenery down first and then adding in the hydrangeas here I'll do I did one kind of aqua lily down at the bottom so I'll do two at the top to kind of keep that odd numbers in here to make it look 
nice and pleasing for the eye. I wanted to do this as a wreath, but I just wasn't feeling the wreath. So then when I went looking through my stuff, I go, that frame, I've been wanting to redo it. So it kind of turned into a wreath on the frame. Adding in a little bit more greenery after I tucked in some baby's breath at the top and all my lilies. And now I have pleated this uh, burlap trim back and forth. So I have four loops on each side. And then I'm gonna go right into the center and I'm gonna cut about an inch in on one side and then the other. And I'm gonna take some of this paddle wire. It is really, really thin. So I am doubling it here through the center of those slits that we cut. And then that tail in the front, I'm gonna bring it right through those slits to the back side and I'm gonna wrap the wire around that tail so it holds it onto the back. And then I'll take and just twist that wire around nice and tight. And then what I'll do is of course open up my loops here and then I can twist and turn them because of those slits that we made so that I can arrange this bow however I want it to be so that it lays nicely on our project. I love this color, it's so pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down. And then we're gonna take the cross here with the, I covered up the Happy Easter on the other side. I painted over it just in case it got seen somehow. And we're gonna glue this right up above the lily. I added a lily off camera down there onto the center of our ribbon. And then once I adjust the loops and things and pleat the tails a little bit, this project is complete. So I hope you enjoyed the projects that we made today. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you like the egg bouquet the best, the cute bunny pillow, or our Easter wreath frame, our thrift to treasure project. Please give this video a thumbs up. Remember if you're not a subscriber to go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and that little notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me. I'm gonna leave you with one last thought. Just breathe. Our life has value. For the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. In Him we live and move and have our being. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.